time, we're given plane this time, and the plane is given in vector form. Actually, I just realized I don't know what the example says. <laughs> But I presume it says find the either the point normal form or find the Cartesian equation of that of that plane. Either way, it will do. So I will show you how to do that. And the in the in the course of this solution, we will come up with the slightly altered version of the Cartesian equation for the plane, which is worth remembering as well. So first I will just follow the steps which we have to follow when we convert the equation of the plane into the Cartesian form. Something like this I already showed you once. I will follow those steps again right now. Uh, so if I do something like this, I just uh, introduce my x, y, z components for the x vector, and then, and then I make the equations in the per component form. So this x is equated to the whole first component on the right-hand side. This y is equated to the whole second component on the right-hand side, and so on. So if I do these equations, here what I will come up with, well, I did uh, in this, I mean, like I did uh, some further adjustments. So actually I wrote x take 2. This, this 2 went on this side. And then I equated this to negative lambda and 3 mu. That's how this appeared. Uh, the second one will be y plus 1, because this negative 1 went on the left-hand side. So y plus 1. And the right-hand side is negative 2 lambda and negative 4 mu. I say right-hand side, even though it's on the left-hand side. It's just convenient way to write things. And the third line will be something like this. This one appeared by taking these two on the left hand side, so it will be z take two. Here it is. And here my four lambda and double mu. So after we've done this, the method of converting the vector form of the plane into the Cartesian form says now we choose we choose wisely here. We choose wisely which of these two equations we solve for lambda and mu. Uh, I think I saw, I chose, I chose the last two, these two. So if I, if I choose these two, uh, I can do like this. I can multiply my second one by, by, by two and add this to the third one. If I do that, the presence of lambda will disappear, right? Because it will be negative four plus four, lambda is gone. Here will be negative 8 of mu plus 2 of mu. It will be negative 6 of mu. Here it is. Equal. On the right-hand side, it will be double of y plus z, double of y plus z. And the free term will be, there won't be any free term because plus 2, negative 2, it is 0. So that's how my equation will be after I do this transformation with the last two equations. I scale the second one by 2 and added it, uh, and added it to the uh, to the third one. Well, now I can, I can do the second step by scaling the third one by 2, by negative 2. No, by 2, I'm sorry. By scaling the second one by 2 and adding it to the, I said the third one, I guess. Again, I'm, I'm scaling the third one by 2 and add it, and I want to add it to the second one. If I do that, that will kill the presence of mu this time, because it will be 4 mu, take 4 mu, it is 0. Uh, in case of lambda, it will be 8 take 2, so it will be 6, lambda equal. Uh, on the right-hand side, it is, uh, it is double z plus y, double z plus y, and the free term is negative 4 plus 1, it is negative 3. Here's my solution. Effectively, this is a solution. I can, of course, cancel negative 6. I can cancel, I can cancel six in here, it will be a solution for lambda and mu. Like I said, every time you do this, before we discuss with you the general way to solve a system of linear equations, you can do it in any ad hoc way you are familiar or in favor of. Uh, that's my way of doing these things I'm in favor of. Now I take this lambda and mu, if I sub it in into my first equation, it will be the equation of P or X, Y, Z. This is something we call the equation of the plane. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's the substitution. This is a substitution. Yes. 
uh, well, in fact, what I did, because I don't want to deal with the one six here, because if I cancel by six, it will be one, thir one, one third here, one six here, it will be one, second, uh, one half here, one third here, and one, uh, one six here. Rather than doing that, I just, take this, I just took this equation and I multiplied by six. If I multiply the whole equation, the first one, where I'm going to sub in my solutions, by six, that's how it will be. And then the substitution of these two pieces in here will take this form. Because I no longer need to divide anything by six. Negative six lambda will come straight from here. That's the bracket here. And negative plus 18 mu, it will be negative three times of this. Here it is. Right-hand side like this. If you simplify everything, that will be the equation of my plane. After all, simplifications and arithmetics. That's how my Cartesian form, that's how, that's how my Cartesian equation of the plane will look. Now, here's the observation, which I want to now consider, and I will develop this a little bit further. This point, this point, this vector A sitting here, let me just, this vector A sitting here, which points to to my plane, some randomly chosen point on my plane, this vector is supposed to satisfy this equation. Am I right? If I plug these numbers, 2, negative 1, and 2, in here, we should come up with the correct numerical identity. That's the meaning of the Cartesian equation of the plane. Let's just try it. Negative 6 times 2, it's negative 12. Negative 7 take, times negative 1, it's plus 7. So negative 12 plus 7, it's negative 5. Then goes... Then goes negative 10, negative 5, negative 10, plus 15, zero. Bingo. No surprises so far. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to split this 15 into this combination. So rather than writing this 15, I will write here negative 6 times 2, negative 7 times negative 1, negative 5 times 2. These numbers. If I replace this 15 with this longer expansion, it will be a correct replacement. You, you may wonder why do I do that? Why do I trouble? Why, why do I bother to write so, write so much? But if I do that, you won't be objecting on the legal side. It's a correct step. And now if I recombine my terms, I can write it like this. So if I take this 15 again, if I replace it with what I just said, and if I combine them in a pure x, pure y, and pure z fashion, that's how it will be. My 15 it dissolved into this negative 2 times negative 6, negative 1 times negative 7, 2 times negative 4. Now, let me ask you this. This form, this is almost the same as a Cartesian equation of the plane, but it looks like a dot product of two vectors, isn't it? It does look like a dot product of two vectors, one of them We'll have components negative 6, negative, sorry, negative 6, negative 7, negative 5, that's right. The other vector will have components x take 2, y plus 1, and z take 2. Right? Let me just write it this way, in the vector form. So, here it is. It's a dot product of two vectors, negative 6, negative 7, negative 5, dot product with this vector. These are the components of my A. Remember, I chose them to be the components of my A. And X, Y, Z, they are the components of my X vector. You see how I can write my equation? My Cartesian equation of the plane took this beautiful form, vector form. And we see the dot product of two vectors equals zero. What does it say to us in terms of the geometry? Aye? They are perpendicular. It means that the vector x take a, x vector, it's a vector which points into my plane, arbitrary point. x take a, it will be the vector totally lying within the plane. It should be perpendicular to this vector. So if I call this vector n, these are the, the, the vector like this will be the vector perpendicular to my plane. Something I mentioned to you earlier in relation to the Cartesian form, but now we see this in a clear justified way. The coefficients in your Cartesian equation, they deliver the perpendicular vector to your plane, straight away. Uh, the equation in this form sometimes is called point normal form. 
of the equation of the plane or Cartesian equation of the plane. It's a nice term to remember. So what we just discovered with you, this n will be perpendicular to the vector x take a. Right. Right, right, right. Now, let me ask you this. Imagine now you were looking at the same task we just did, we just did with you. We just converted the vector form into the Cartesian form. And that was our conversion. Here, here it is. Imagine you look at this again now. Do you see now an alternative way to do that? After all of this we just discovered with you about this point normal form, about the special meaning of this n vector composed of the coefficients, can you come up with the alternative way to solve this question? Converting vector form into Cartesian one. Please go ahead. The whole method is, I mean, the whole idea of conversion actually is it's all focused on this vector n, which is jointly perpendicular to my b and c. And we found this vector in this long convoluted way. Why don't we just find this another way? Why a cross product? If we, if we take the cross product of b and c, we also will find the vector jointly perpendicular to b and c. And we can use this another new vector in my point normal form, which will return the Cartesian equation straight away. Isn't it? And that's another way of conversion of the equation of the plane, vector equation of the plane into the Cartesian form. Rather than doing this solution thing, you can use the cross product for that by finding the cross product of p and c, and that will be your normal vector. So here it is. Let's just try to do that for this question. I call it vector n1. In principle, it might be a different vector, different to my original n, so that's why I just call it differently. This time, I choose for this vector the cross product of b and c. Here's my table representing the cross product. Here's a line of components for the vector b. Negative 1, negative 2, 4. Here's a line of components for the vector C. 3, negative 4, 2. Now I start doing my process of crossing out rows and columns. I component of my vector N1, it will be this double table, 2 times 2 table. This time I'm not going to write this out. I'm going to compute it straight away right here in place. If I do that, it will be negative 2 times negative 2, negative 4, plus 16. It should be plus 12. It should be plus 12. Uh, second component will be, again, this here's my 2 times 2 table. If I compute this right here in place, it will be negative 1 times 2. It's negative 2, take 12. Negative 2, take 12, it's negative 14. Second component. First one was 12, 14. Last component. I focus on K now. Here's a little table. It is 4 across here, and it is plus 6 across here, so it is 10. So my vector altogether is the components 12, 14, and 10. It's a different vector, but it is a double or negative double of this vector the vector we found another way. So next time, you see how quickly you can find this jointly perpendicular vector. I mean, it's a new way for it to you. It just, you just saw this way second time now. But in principle, if you're efficient with these computations, it's just one line of thinking. None of these long solutions and stuff like this. You should appreciate the efficiency the cross product brings into this task.